TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. But by the time you see this, the wait will be over. <laughs> and it'll be too late. But you can still leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Don't forget, man, Twitch. If you ever see me missing from somewhere, I'm on Twitch. Forever. T-H-E-E underscore L-I-T underscore O-N-E, man. Don't forget we do got Patreon five days a week. And we got merch. Uh, this is the Deadly Battle of Hackney. Burrow at War. Let's get into it. This is by Kid Nerd, by the way, man. Shout out Kid Nerd, man. Hackney, a place where thousands of people all over the UK rush to move to, with some of the best schools, social life and quality of living in London. Hackney really has something for everyone, with one of the most thriving nightlifes in London, located in Shoreditch and Dalston. A unique opportunity of inner city nature and wildlife in London fields and the Hackney City Farm, while also having wonderful examples of art and culture with its several museums and street art, while also being home to a wide range of different cultures cultures and social classes who live side by side of each other. All of this while being so close to the centre of the city. But in the background of all of this, there's a darker side to the borough. A side which is constantly getting covered up. Today we'll be getting into the history of Hackney and the deadly gang war that's plagued the borough for decades. Let's get into it. Before I get into this video guys, make sure to follow my Instagram in the description. I'm going to be doing a lot of giveaways on there soon so make sure you don't miss out. Now Hackney was very different in the past to how it is now. There wasn't much covering up what it was back in the day, which was a poverty ridden area with a lot of crime. In the 1960s, Hackney was seen as the heart of East London. Despite its harsh poverty, Man, the nightlife- I'm looking for Dale and, and Rodis right now, that look like, you know what I'm saying? made it a very bright and exciting area. But in the background, residents lived in relative fear due to old school English gangsters who self-governed a lot of what was happening around the borough. Probably one of the most famous examples being the Cray Twins, who grew up in the slums of Hackney and grew up to be one of the most powerful and influential duos in the criminal yeah, underground around Hackney. London. Decades after this, a new force started to emerge inside London, the Jamaican Yardies, and they were building up a big reputation for violence around London. Some of the first areas the Yardies were building their influence was inside Hackney and another area in London called Tottenham. And it wasn't long before gang members in Hackney and Tottenham started having issues between themselves. In the late 90s, back and forth issues- yeah, Man, the Jamaicans, they never cared. Don't forget I'm part Jamaican. There's not a lot of care. <laughs> I'm gonna do what they want. And then you just gotta live with it. Is mainly between the London Fields and Pembury areas of Hackney and the Broadwater Farm Estate in Tottenham, escalated in a full out war, which was one of the deadliest gang wars the UK had seen at the time. Thankfully, this feud ended up dying out after the younger generations didn't keep it alive. Instead, the younger generations in Hackney were more focused in petty feuds inside the borough. School fights between kids from London Fields and Clapton started being a cause for concern in Hackney. It started getting a bit more worrying when different areas and estates around the borough started picking sides. A couple kids from nearby estates in Holly Street and Balance Road in Homerton started teaming up with Clapton against London Fields. But at this time, it was just an innocent group of kids fighting each other outside of schools. Unfortunately, this all changed on June the 9th, 2003. A few days before, boys from London Fields and Holly Street had a group fight like they had been doing throughout the last few months. Holly Street were looking for revenge and decided to take this feud to the next step. So on June the 9th, they drove to London Fields, which is no less than two minutes away from Holly Street, in three different cars loaded with a pistol and a shotgun. When they arrived, they spotted a group of kids playing outside the London Hey man, I swear, this is when, like, at the pinnacle of gun violence in Chicago, I feel like, I feel like everybody was on the same timeline. Like, we was all fighting, 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 using fists at one point, and then at the same time, Everybody was just like, you know what? 
field to stay and immediately started shooting. Two shots hit an 18 year old called JD Brissett, sadly killing him, starting a war which goes on till this day. This murder was all over the news and was labelled as the first ever postcode war death in London and more was to come. Throughout the rest of the 2000s, violence was erupting all over the borough, which divided Hackney into two sides, red side and blue side, with different estates picking different sides. Hackney's a small place as well, with it being the fourth smallest out of 32 boroughs in London and with so many estates and gangs all over the borough, with most of the time only a street separating them. Violence was becoming an everyday occurrence, especially in the summers during school holidays. On one summer in 2008, a 16 year old boy called Ahmed was with a group of his friends. My boy Ahmed looked like a good kid. Bro is chilling, feet up, knees together, relaxing. Continue on the top floor of his house and estate in London Fields. When they spotted a group of boys riding bikes towards their building, Ahmed's friends scattered while the group was chasing them to the top of their building. But Ahmed lost his friends and got cornered by the gang, so he attempted to climb down the high-rise estate on the side of the building, which was his only escape. He ended up falling 60 feet to his death. A day before, he was meant to receive his GCSE results, which he passed nine subjects on. Ten days later, London Fields boys went uh, like I said, that's a good kid. He was just trying to get away from trouble. He had cornered that man and he thought he was could do something that nobody could, probably revenge. So six boys from the London Fields area rode bicycles near an opposing area called Pembury and stabbed a 14 year old boy who went by the name of Festa just yards from his house leaving him to die. The boys then proceeded to even slash Festa's 16 year old sister in the face. He was with him at the time. Around the same time all of this mess was happening on the streets, a group of slightly older guys from London Fields was starting to pave the way I'm for- not even gonna lie, it sounds like they hit a bunch of civilians. That ain't gangster. Hackney musically. A few early artists from the London Fields area, like Margs, Asco, Hypo, and Tricky, made a rap group called Mass Town. They were really making noise on the music scene in a time before big record deals for UK artists. But Mass Town's early success really showcased to a lot of younger kids that there may be a chance of success outside of the streets. Younger kids from the London Fields area also tried their chance on music. One of these kids being someone who went by the name of Error Kid, who jumped on tracks with other younger members from London Fields. But sadly in 2009, his music career was cut short after he was attacked by members from the opposing areas of Holly Street and Hoxton, leaving him dead. More youngers from London Fields also started dropping music. You said Mars and Tricky have a podcast and they're part of the culture. I've heard the names. <clears throat> Within themselves ROS or Ride Out Squad and they were making a lot of noise on the scene in the early 2010s. Other artists throughout Hackney started gaining more notoriety as well. One of the first diss tracks to come out of Hackney was from a rapper in Homerton called Kemsey. He dropped a song called Balance Block which was a big diss track to London Fields. A rapper called Rimsey from the Upper Clapton area also started dropping some big hey, tracks Rimsey. with good production value and with he was looking like he was going to be the with hell to stand the time because he still relevant the next big thing out of London. But while stuff was looking up for him on the music scene, unfortunately the streets of Hackney got the best of him. On January the 10th, Rimsey alongside two others were riding bicycles through Hackney, loaded with a revolver looking for any opposition gang members. An undercover police car spotted the group and started to pursue them. When Rimsey let off one shot into the unmarked police car before his gun jammed, the group cycled away, eventually ditching their bikes and making a run for it. But the tree were cool and Rimsey was sentenced to 11 years in jail. Another up and coming artist from an estate called Fellows Cool in You know what's crazy? I didn't know that was why Rimsey was in jail for that long. Bro got, bro is moving reckless. Why would he do that? I understand they was on a ride out looking for ops, but like, into a police car gotta be the worst luck.
Nackney was starting to get his name out there on the scene when he dropped a tune called Trash Town, which was a direct diss track to London Fields. But sadly, just like Rimsey, he let the streets get the better of him. His name was Dubsy, and alongside three other friends from the fellow Courts estate, they took a five minute trip from their estate to an opposing estate in Hackney called Hotston. When they spotted the 18 year old called Marcel Adai, he was recently seen in a Hotston music video. The group spotted him and ran him down until Marcel tripped up. After he fell, the group proceeded to hold him down and stab him 14 times leaving him for dead. The worst thing about this is not too long before, Fellows Cool and Hotston used to be part of the same gang until civil disputes broke them apart. Dubsy would receive a life sentence for this, cutting his music career short. But one murder that affected a lot of especially younger people in Hackney happened on April the 23rd 2013. A kid who just turned 16 that went by the name of Dido was travelling home on his bus from school, ready to celebrate his 16th birthday, when he passed a school called Highbury Grove. Another school kid who spotted D-Dot through the window boarded the bus, stabbed him and ran off. D-Dot collapsed and sadly the next day he was pronounced dead. D-Dot started getting close to the London Fields gang in his area who were still feuding the nearby area of Pembury who his 15 year old attacker was from. Due to the close proximity- like a, people, a lot of people take on that gang moniker, that gang lifestyle and really don't know what they're getting themselves into. Cause like you might not have done nothing on road but you with some people that have and they, they ops are your ops now, so you got to be on point. There is no mo taking the bus. You better stay at home or stay in your hood or, or Uber or, you know what I'm saying, call for a ride. You have all these feeding areas. Gangsters a lot of kids cannot from take different the bus. gangs would come into close contact with each other, resulting in even the simple task of going to and from school, a constant risk. Even sending kids outside of Hackney was no longer safe. With Hackney being both in North and East London, gangs from nearby boroughs like Islington and Tower Hamlets also started getting involved in Hackney politics, which was becoming an increasing problem. But stuff for a little while was looking up for Hackney. Due to the 2012 Summer Olympics, Olympics taking place in London. The government used the Olympics as an excuse to clean up parts of East London, which was lacking behind other parts of the city. The Olympics took place in Stratford, a town just outside of Hackney, which had its own issues with crime. But by the time the Olympics was beginning, Stratford and parts of Hackney- oh, they put the ultra gentrification on the hood. I know that thing looked so good. <laughs> He looked unrecognisable to his former state. Tower blocks were being taken down and replaced for modern apartments, and many low-income residents were being relocated to areas further away from the centre of London. Yeah, and for a few yeah, years yeah. or so. When that money was coming through, they had to get them up out of there. This is all business. The crime rate actually went down in Hackney, but this didn't last long. It would only take two years after the Olympics for the crime rate to go back up. And not long after, sadly another life was lost to the feud. J Dot was a straight A student from Homerton, who came to the UK with his family from Congo, searching for a better life. But unfortunately, while residing in Hackney, he started getting involved in the streets from early. J Dot and his two friends, Gashi and Sana, were around an hour away from London and a town called Swindon, where Sana said the trio were out selling drugs in a county line operation. On January the 6th, 2015, the three were travelling back to London on the train. But what J. Dot and Gashi didn't know was that Sana was in communication with a 17-year-old London Fields member, letting him know that the three would be arriving at Hackney Central Station at Back door them. That's tough. You never know who you think you're hanging around with, man. That's why you just can't trust nobody in this game. There is no honor amongst thieves, man. You think somebody in there is your homeboy? No, you can't trust them either. 11 p.m. When the three arrived, Jado and Gashi stepped out of the station, not knowing that their so-called friend Sana had set them up in a trap of multiple London Fields members packed with knives. Once they walked out of the station, the three dispersed after being ambushed by the London Fields boys. Luckily, they managed to get away, eventually ending up in their area Homerton. But at this time, they didn't put two and two together that their friend Sana had set them up. The London Fields members spent the next half an hour searching 
searching through the Hackney streets in an attempt to find both Gassy and Jado. Sana managed to locate the pair and once again leak their whereabouts. This time they weren't as lucky. Jado was stabbed several times with a fatal stab wound to his heart. Four people including Sana were arrested for this murder where Sana even turned against the other three and testified against them. They all got- That door is crazy. I'm not trying to say nothing, I'm not trying to, it's always a female though. <laughs> It's always a female playing both sides because the ops are always going to be thinking with their they little head instead of their big head. No matter how old or anything, man. That's why the back door is so, you know, it works so well. Pause. But lengthy sentences. Around the same time as all of this happening, the UK drill scene started popularising in South London. Hackney as a whole was a bit late to the drill scene. But in 2018, the borough started making their mark on the genre. A London Fields rapper named Lats blew up on the scene after dropping his hit single called The Truth. Another rapper coming out of the opposing area of Homerton was also making waves called KO, especially after dropping his Mad About Bars freestyle, which solidified him in the genre. But it was another home and rapper that really put on for Hackney after he dropped no doubt the biggest drill song to come out of the UK at the time. The rapper being someone who went by the name of Unknown T. Unknown T hadn't been rapping for too long but when he dropped his single Home and B on August the 19th 2018 the song grew to a point that the drill scene had not seen before. I don't think he I've ever the heard this song low key. I don't have to listen to it. <laughs> UK drill song to chart in the official singles charts, which was a shock to a lot of people. After this drop, Unknown T was looking like he was going to be the first drill artist to cross over to the mainstream. He secured a deal with the big music corporation Universal and even performed alongside big Canadian rapper Drake at the O2. But there was one issue. Unknown T was under investigation for a New Year's murder in 2018. A murder which took place not long. You might want to forget the streets, but the streets will never forget you man what's done in the dark is gonna come to the light man remember that when you in those streets like i know you want to make a way out but man hey just just know what's what you got is gonna you know probably come up Long before he dropped his first big single. Basically, during the New Year's party, Unknown T and other Homerton members attended, a 20-year-old man completely unrelated to Hackney's gang politics was stabbed to death after an altercation at the party. Unknown T alongside three others were arrested and charged for the murder. Another man part of the Homerton gang was also meant to be charged for the murder as well, called Shag, but sadly him himself was also killed by London Fields members some months before. Unknown T managed to beat the murder the case, claiming he wasn't involved in the fight, but his two co-defenders was not as lucky and ended up getting sentenced for the murder. Throughout the next few years, back and forth murders, shootings and stabbings have continued throughout the borough, so much that I can't even cover everything on this video. One murder that was covered heavily on the news was the murder of a 29 year old man called Joshua White on the 26th of April 2019. Just before this murder, a young member of the Stokey 16 gang who were allied with London Fields received threats from an older Stokey member who was in jail. The older member said that he wasn't putting in enough work for the gang and quoted that Theo needed to get somebody down or he would be de-recruited from the gang. So Theo alongside two other Stokey 16 members rode around in a stolen SUV looking for people around Homerton. When the group arrived at Frampton Park Road in E9, they spotted 29 year old Joshua Ware who used to have links to Homerton but was about to start a job as a train driver soon. Theo alongside two other Bro was about to be 30 jumped out on Joshua Ware and chased him into a shop stabbing him multiple times with a two-foot sword, all in front of a young kid who fell to the ground while getting chased. Unfortunately, Joshua would die from his injuries, but the gang wasn't finished there. They jumped back in the SUV and searched for more people. They eventually found someone else they recognised, who was with his partner and young child at the time, but this didn't stop them and they proceeded to stab him multiple times. Not long after the second stabbing, police were noted traumatised and both of them kids for life man smh man 
fight about the attacks happening out of an SUV. So while the group was looking for more people, they ended up getting into a police chase where they crashed the car and dispersed. All three attackers were caught. Cool. Around the same time as all of this happening, members of the Homerton and Holly Street gangs linked up and started calling themselves 98s. They started dropping music under the 98s name and instantly started gaining millions of views on their songs. But unfortunately, their success was not long lived, with four of their biggest rappers on some serious charges looking at some serious time. Quite recently, 98's rapper DA, who had some big star potential, got sentenced to 28 years for a misidentification. Well, all the good rappers are in jail shooting. 98's rapper Billy Billions is also locked up right now in relation to the same case and if he's found guilty he'll also be looking at a long stretch. Another two 98's rappers. That's terrible. Billy my dog too. That's tough man. Free Billy. Called KO and Hitman are also currently on trial for a 2022 murder of a London Fields member called KB. On August the 13th of that year, KB was attending a children's birthday party in Walthamstow, East London. When he stepped out the party to go to his car, two men who police claim is KO and Hitman were waiting for him and fatally shot him. Not too long after, KO dropped a song called Laughing Stop, which was quickly building up a lot of attention after recent events. But it was building attention in all the wrong ways. Yeah, YouTube probably snatched that right down. The police monitored this song heavily, which had a lot of incriminating lyrics. One lyric even described how the same gun which was used to kill KB was also used to shoot KB's older brother previously, which was something the feds didn't know until they listened to the song. It was later found out by forensics that the same gun had been used in seven different shootings before the murder. After heat from the song and other evidence, KO and Hitman were both booked for the murder. Not too long before this, another up and coming rapper from the London field side was also starting to look promising called Blacker. But once again, his career was cut short after a shooting in 2020 him. with a submachine gun sprayed out of control, hitting several civilians outside the children's park. Blacker, alongside a cab driver, was sentenced to 35 years for the murder. Unfortunately, it seems like this feud has no signs of stopping, with many lives lost through out the small borough. It's kind of crazy that this is all happening within a place where a lot of people believe to be one of the best places to live in London. But this turf war which escalated from a group of innocent school kids having fistfights more than two decades ago has made life live in hell for many residents growing up in the borough. It's been your boy Kid Nerd and stay safe. That's how it always is, man. That's the recurring story of a lifetime, man. Tell her, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn your post. I'm gone.